I'm Jane Goodall, and most people know me, if they know me at all, because I've been studying chimpanzees since 1960, so we just had our 50th anniversary. And my goodness, you know, one group of chimpanzees, 50 years, they can live to be over 60. They're all different, just like we are. And we're still learning new things about them, even after 50 years. So it's pretty amazing. And what is it that got you involved with uh, chimpanzees? I was growing up right here in this house and uh, looking out at the trees. I always loved animals, always loved all birds and insects and collected them around me. And then I began reading books about Tarzan and I would imagine that I was a much better mate for Tarzan than that stupid Jane he went and married. I was very jealous. So when I was 11 years old, I dreamed of going to Africa, living with animals and writing books about them. I didn't think of being a scientist. I didn't even imagine I could ever study anything like a chimpanzee. I would have studied anything. But I met this wonderful man, Louis Leakey. He studied fossils. And he asked me if I would go and try and learn about chimpanzees. So, I mean, not just any animal, but the one more like us than any other living creature. And what have you learned from studying the chimpanzees? Well, I think one of the most important things we learn is that we're not, we humans are not separate from the animal kingdom, we're part of the animal kingdom. And, you know, the chimpanzee shares 98% of its DNA with us, so that's how like we are biologically. And their brains are almost exactly the same as ours, it's just that ours are a bit bigger. And I think I'm right in saying that you, you, you study <coughs> chimpanzees in a totally different way to anybody else before you. Can you tell us a bit about how you've treated the chimpanzees when you well, studied them? When I, when I went out to study the chimpanzees, I had no degree, I hadn't been to university. And so I just watched them the way I watched the animals as I grew up. Uh, I knew from my dog Rusty that animals had personalities, that they had minds, that they could think about things. I knew that they could feel happiness and sadness and had emotions like ours, because my dog taught me. And yet, when I began talking about the chimpanzees in those terms, and finally went to Cambridge to get a degree, a PhD, I was told, no, no, you can't talk about animals having minds or personalities or feelings. That's unique to humans. But the chimpanzees have really uh, helped science to change the way it thinks about all animals. I think it's the chimpanzees, perhaps more than anything else, that have broken through and helped us to understand how like us they are and that we should have more respect for the other amazing creatures with whom we share the planet. You know, I've been lucky, I've been living with chimpanzees and learning about them. That doesn't mean I don't care about the other animals. I started off with my dog. I love dogs best of all in all the world. But, you know, I want to try and see that some of these other extraordinary creatures are saved as well, because they're all in danger, so many of them anyway. Their habitats are being destroyed, the forests are being cut down, the land is being dug up for agriculture. People take more and more and more land for their stupid shopping malls and things. And so it's, this is why I feel really passionate about involving young people, children, students, in helping us to save some of these wild places and to really care and understand and love the other animals with whom we share the world. So, can I ask, why, why are you supporting the E-Day Arc and asking the children to make animal puppets? I think the E-Day Arc is a great project because it's, uh, it's raising awareness, it's making people think. And if you have to choose an animal that you care about uh, and make it into a puppet, you learn about it. You can't just make it, you can't just guess. You have to, if you want to make a really good puppet, you need to know a bit about what's, what's the heart inside your puppet. It's not just a thing, it's going to be special for you. So it, it helps, I mean, I had a, a puppet horse when I was young and he was called Stompler. And um, I loved him dearly and, and um, I'm sure that when children get involved in that way, it really makes a difference. Can you tell us a little um, bit about your Roots and yeah. Shoots network? I'm very, very passionate about the program we have for young people. 
Why? Because I could kill myself trying to save chimpanzees and forests and habitats. But if young people don't grow up to be better stewards of the natural world than we've been, then I may as well give up. We all may as well give up. But um, the Roots and Shoots program, you know, it's a symbolic name. Think of a little seed. Think of an acorn. Well, it's very small, and yet look at an oak tree, a hundred year old oak tree, it's huge. When that little acorn begins to grow, tiny roots appear, a little tiny shoot appears. And you can pick it up, oh, it's so tiny and weak. But there's a magic in that acorn, so that those little roots to reach the water can work through rocks and eventually knock them aside. And that little shoot to reach the sunlight can work its way through cracks in a brick wall and eventually knock the wall down. And if we see the rocks and the walls as all the things that we've done uh, to harm the planet, social and environmental, uh, then hope hundreds and thousands of young people, the roots and shoots, can break through and make this a better world for all living things. Fantastic. The um, main message of roots and shoots Every single one of us makes a difference every single day and we get to choose what sort of difference are we going to make. And every group chooses three kinds of project to make the world better. One to help people, one to help animals, including domestic animals like dogs. And this is Astro. And uh, one to improve the environment that we all share. And your network's become very large, hasn't it? Over, over time it's spread all around the world. Yeah, Roots and Shoots began in Tanzania with high school students. It's now in 121 countries. Um, in the UK, we have nearly a thousand groups stretched right across the country. And we have members who are preschoolers right through university with more and more adults wanting to get involved. Can you tell us a little bit about why you're, you have hope for the future? I've actually got four reasons for hope. Um, first of all, it is the youth. And I have hope because everywhere I go now, there are young people with shining eyes wanting to tell Dr. Jane what they've been doing to make the world a better place for people, for animals, for the environment, and for peace. And there's no question but that they are changing the world. You know, we've got about 15,000 active groups and an average group about 30. My second reason for hope is that we have an extraordinary brain. And when we really start acknowledging that there are problems and we really get our brains working it's quite amazing some of the solutions that we come up with solar power uh, tide power wind power uh, learning to live in a way that is less st stealing of the earth's resources thinking about what we do I mean all, all of these things my third reason for hope nature is so kind we can destroy an area make it horrible give it time, perhaps give it some help, and it can once again become beautiful and support animals again. And animal species almost extinct can be given another chance. I just did a whole book about it. It was most inspiring, hope for animals in their world, all these amazing people. And that's my last reason for hope, the inspirational um, human spirit. There are people who tackle seemingly impossible tasks and won't give up. And they're all around us, and um, people are just amazing. And uh, the children might think that what they can do is too small. How would you encourage them to do what they can? A lot of people feel, well, I'm just me, and there's big problems out in the world, so what I do won't make a difference. And if you were alone in the world, it wouldn't make a difference. But we're not alone in the world. And I think one thing Roots and Shoots does is to help young people understand that uh, when one action is multiplied by 10, 20, 30, 40, and then around the world, so that millions of people are doing small things, those small things add up to something rather big.